Coming up this week on Sporting Journal Radio. Yeah, he would have never known it was at the surface. <laughs> the best part, I think, was that it was tagged. Did Just I tell that story? I don't know. You talked to the boss. The DNR has submitted information to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service saying we have a healthy fish a fishery. A next day record will come out of this river. Yeah. I fish, I hunt, and always will. Broadcasting from the Al Clare Outdoor Studios. Presented by OnX. Know where you stand with OnX. <laughs> We're not just a radio show anymore. This is Sporting Journal Radio. That's right. Welcome to the show. I'm Brett Amundsen. That's Dan Amundsen. We're at Riverbend Resort on Lake of the Woods for the SJR 500 with a live studio audience. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise, everybody. <laughs> Heck yeah, this is awesome. This is the third year we've done this. Uh, we started it back a couple of years ago to celebrate our 500th episode of Sporting Journal Radio. This is show 605 now, so I don't know how to do the math. We just can't close the yearbook. <laughs> yeah, We're just right. hung up in the past. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So it's been a great time. We've uh, uh, caught a pile of fish up here. I don't know which camera to, uh, which camera am I supposed to This one, with? I this think. One right There's here? no okay. red light, but right. we're not that efficient yet. <laughs> we had a great time fishing for a couple of days. Dan actually, Dan and I came up a couple of days early to pre-fish for this. For and pre-work uh, on motors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I put on my Snap Story uh, Sunday morning, right? We came up Saturday afternoon. Yep. Sunday morning. I was like, all right, we're in line at Timber Mill. This is going to be amazing. The fishing is on fire. Like, Rainy River has been just absolutely on fire this year. Walleyes, sturgeon, uh, suckers. It's just been unreal. <laughs> and, uh, yep. So we're in line, and then all of a sudden, I didn't put anything on my Snap Story for a few hours, and I was getting messages from people like, well, how's fishing? What's going on out there? Like, well, we had some motor problems. Yeah, which, we, we uh, didn't launch a Timber Mill. No. No, we didn't. We let everybody go by us for a while in that line right there. And what was the problem, Dan? Uh, battery. Apparently, if you own an Optimax and uh, you, it sounds like it wants to start doesn't get fuel, check your battery because that's a thing. Yeah, I mean, we had we had some help from some of the guys that are out here, and they were, you know, cleaning spark plugs, and we were checking fuel hoses, and we were doing all sorts of things, and uh, turns out it was a battery. And the, the motor would crank. Yeah, it, like there's not an engine in the world besides an Optimax that sounds like that, that... Uh, has a battery problem. So what Dan's trying to say is he's got an Optimax for sale. <laughs> Maybe. Just shoot me an offer. Money talks. That's right. So it's been a great time. We caught some nice fish. Uh, we were not part of the tournament this year, but we caught some nice walleyes. We caught some nice sturgeon. Actually, what I think is great is once again, your mom outfished you. What? In terms of what? She caught a bigger sturgeon than you did. So are we talking length or numbers? Uh, she total caught a, inches. She caught a bigger surgeon than you. Yeah, that's who bought the reel. <laughs> Happy birthday! <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Money well spent. So there was uh, some really nice fish. Uh, caught some nice walleyes. And man, from the reports that we heard from other people that were up here, just uh, the the slot fish, like the mid twenty inch fish, the mid twenty inch walleyes. Yeah. People were catching them like crazy up here. Yeah, it seemed like based on what we saw and social media, this was the year to be at the Rainy River, and we're here. And we are going to have a couple of guys on the show later, uh, Jamie Dittman and Jesse Sanders. Um, Jamie's been, of course, been on the show many times. Ja it's funny, like, ja I used to come up here with Jamie and get all excited about the walleyes. And I think at first, is Jamie behind there? Yeah, I he's right I, here. I think Just at first, in the you were maybe excited about the walleyes, too. But I watched, a tra I, like, I, wa I watched your transition. I watched you change uh, to more of a sturgeon guy. And I, did you even walleye fish this trip? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. But right at the end with us. Yeah. <laughs> they caught over 40 sturgeon in two days for the tournament this year, including the 68-incher, wow. which Jam Jamie took first place with a 68, and Jesse actually took second, right? It was 64 and a half? Third. Third place. That's right. And then, uh, what was it? Was it Ben Davis for second place? I got to pull it up here. We struggle with names. I know. I'm sorry. It's Reading's hard. Things. Yeah, Ben Davis had a 65-incher, and uh, so, and... Um, Justin Schuver from Ridgetop had a 63. Uh, there's another 63. Alex Peterson had 62 and a half. So, and then Paul Johnson, actually, we came by Paul today, and he was hooked into a big sturgeon that we <laughs> that you actually netted. Dan, I netted it, yeah. The Stowmaster went to work. From our boat. Yeah. Netted his fish. It's not the first time we've done that. 62 inches, and it was tagged. So we're really looking forward to finding out that tagged information. And this whole time we filmed that, we've been filming our fishing out here. We've been filming the tournament and we'll be putting out a video on the Fish Hunt Forever YouTube channel. So watch for all of that. And uh, hopefully by the time we, we edit that, we'll have the tag info. 
You like to think it's government work, though. It's a little slow. <laughs> I would like to have that information on there. Uh, so, and on big walleye, where there was a, a, a lot of big walleyes. I, you caught a nice walleye today. Sure. So did you. Well, I not ca- today. I caught a, You caught a, uh, I caught a 28 up here that, that was just big and fat. You know, some of these fish, I mean, you're, you're 26. When, you, when we netted that fish, I thought it was a lot bigger than 26. Well, you also struggle with numbers. <laughs> so <laughs> it's understandable. It's maybe very true. Uh, but third place, so we had... Four fish over 28 inches entered into the contest this year. Uh, Todd Schobein had a 28. Schobein? Schobein? Todd had a 28. Actually, you see, he was in the lead early, but then he got beat out. Joe Hedry had a 28 and a half. Uh, Austin Nesvold had a, just a slightly larger 28 and a half. And then Dustin Nielsen had a 30-inch walleye. So congratulations to all our winners today. Oh, and we got to mention Lucas Carlos had the largest any other fish, but we have this rule that if you're not here at Riverbend, to pick up your prizes, you forfeit him. And uh, he had to leave. In fact, he, he's like, I got to go. And I'm like, I got prizes for you. Like, you want some prizes? He's like, ah, I can't do it. I can't stick around. So he had to go. So that means that Scott Steber got the any other big fish. Which, what was it? A 33-inch Notice bike? how no one clapped. <laughs> Nobody cared. No? No one cared. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Very nice. So uh, congratulations. And I want to thank um, OnX, who gave us a bunch of prizes. Uh, we had some Cast King stuff. We had stuff from Live Target. Um, Smith's Consumer Products. We had Smith's Consumer Products. Outdoors again. Uh, Greg at Outdoors again gave us some, some the giant rod, which yeah. that reel was huge on this big, heavy. It's going to be uh, Jesse's new sturgeon rod. Did you guys ever put it on the Zebco ice rod? You guys were going to put Tony it on Tony and Gersing? Yeah, gr- you guys were going to put it on that ice rod. Did you ever do it? No, of course not. No. Yeah, thanks for lunch, by the way. And happy yeah. birthday to Tony Cry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody birthday. say happy birthday, happy Tony. Birthday. Happy birthday. And Tony, it's his birthday, and he brought the Blackstone out into the boat and cooked us burgers, venison backstraps. Uh, Greasing brought, Mike Greasing brought some uh, goose bacon. Yep. And I don't know who brought the potatoes, but in any case, he's up in the front. Mike did, thank you. Hey, uh, he's up there in the, in the front of the boat cooking. So it's we are all boat. anchored sturgeon fishing. And anyone downwind was probably really jealous. Well, but then they'd come and deliver, so all the boats <laughs> around us, like, they'd make a full lap around all the boats in Four Mile Bay to make them all jealous. Yeah. They started throwing $20 bills at them to try to get them to come over. But uh, apparently our friendship is too strong. Well, I didn't hear what he said. He said he's expecting those 20s later. Oh, yeah. Well, well thank you very much. You were saying there should be, uh, like, Garmin should come up with a tip. Yeah, every time captain. someone takes a boat snack from the boat captain, there should be an <laughs> option for oh, yeah. tipping and electro- uh, electronic payment on fish finders. Danny Thompson, work on that. Yeah. All right. Uh, so congratulations to all our participants. Our biggest uh, two-day fish donkey tournament, SCR 500. To date, we had 56 people in the contest. Thank you very much. That also means that $537.60 goes to the Keep It Clean program here at Lake of the Woods. So all you guys are helping keep Lake of the Woods clean. Thank you very much. Uh, speaking of that, Joe Henry from Lake of the Woods Tourism is going to join us when we come back. And Paul Johnson from Riverbend. Do not go anywhere. We're live from Riverbend. Res- well, kind of live. Live audience. Yeah. But re-recorded probably when you're watching. Yeah. It, what's it that goes on all the sitcoms? Filmed in front of a live studio. Recorded right? live before yeah, yeah, studio yeah. audience. That thing. That's right. what we're doing. We'll be right back. Hey, thanks for checking out the SGR 500 here on Sporting Journal Radio. This is our official pickup of Sporting Journal Radio and Fish Hunt Forever. This is what we took up to Lake of the Woods. And the beauty of this truck is it's really comfortable to drive. Plenty of towing and pulling power, so we brought Dan's boat up there. Didn't even know we had a boat half the time behind it, but it's got so many cameras around it, it's nice because you can you can constantly check how the boat is running. You can see if you got gear in the pickup bed, you can see how the gear back there is running, make sure nothing's blowing out. And of course, it's super comfortable and climate controlled with heated or cooled seats along the way. And for the SJR 500 this year, we donated over $500 to keep it clean at Lake of the Woods. And that's one of our missions here at Fish Hunt Forever, is to preserve our outdoor traditions, our hunting and fishing and angling rights, and also preserve those opportunities for future generations. And Invergrove Toyota love that, and that's why they wanted to be a part of Fish Hunt Forever. So go see Invergrove Toyota. They're located off of Robert Street, 494 in Invergrove, Minnesota. Tell them you want to get yourself a new Toyota Tundra or one of the new Tacomas that uh, are coming out here in 2024. These are neat trucks. And uh, tell them you want, to get, you want a Fish Hunt Forever deal. You can find out all the information at Sporting Journal Radio dot com or go to fishhuntforever.com. Thank you for being the official truck sponsor in Grove Toyota.
All right, welcome back to Sporting Journal Radio. I'm Brett Amundsen along with Dan Amundsen. We're at Riverbend Resort right now. We forgot one little thing at the beginning of the show. Dan, who are this week's sponsors? This week's show is brought to us by Invergrove Toyota. When looking for your new rig, go to Invergrove Toyota. They're the official truck sponsor of Fish Hunt Forever. Haybill Heights Campground and Resort. Go fish Devil's Lake. Learn more at haybillheights.com. OnX Hunt, landowner information, public land access, and much, much more. Know where you stand with OnX. Prairie Sportsman, the new season is underway. You can watch episodes anytime at the Prairie Sports. It's been YouTube channel and Lake of the Woods tourism. Lake hey. of the Woods is the walleye capital of the world. Plan a trip for this year at Lake of the Woods MN.com. And wouldn't you know, from Lake of the Woods tourism, Joe Henry joins us right now along with Paul Johnson from Riverbend. How you doing, fellas? Doing good. Thank doing you. great. Doing yeah. great. Uh, thank you for having us, Paul, by the way. And thank you for having us, Joe. It's kind of cool being in front of a live studio audience. I mean, we must have three, four hundred people here, don't you think? <laughs> you Something say like three that. or four? I'm terrible with numbers, so I'm not quite sure. Uh, but I will say uh, it's been a great couple of nights. Like, we have a, like a happy hour and we do door prizes in here each night. So Monday night we do a little rules meeting to kick it off and then Tuesday night we, after the first day we come in and give away some prizes. We do it again tonight, too. And it's been packed in here. Like, you guys wouldn't be open normally, right? This well, springtime is, you know, that transitional time so monday tuesday wednesdays traditionally we're, we're closed and then open thursdays through sundays but you you can't close for something like this right well hopefully i know you had to find staff because it's probably some vacation time of the year so thank you for staff in the place and uh, allowing us to, to come in here and eat and drink maybe one or two or three or four no uh, well, you guys you guys had some of the food while you're here i mean obviously i know you had the drinks and those are very good <laughs> what are you, what are you trying to very say clear. Joe? <laughs> but but the food, water. hey, isn't the food here good? The yeah, Notorious P.I.G. Good. If you haven't had it, have it. Yeah. I've had it two nights in a row now. What's that? Notorious P.I.G. Well, I tell you what, some of the some of the appetizers here are very unique, and they are so good. And do you still have those nachos? Um, those are more of a summer menu item. Okay. So we we you'll have them. coming. Yeah, you'll have them. <laughs> tell, tell, talk about those nachos that you do in the summer. So we call them trash can nachos, and it, it's kind of a, an experience dish. Um, they, they'll put the nachos together in what we call a trash can, but it's like a number 10 can. Uh, we build them inside that, cook them, bring them out to the table, and then as we pull the, I'm trying to explain. It's almost like show, a coffee, inside of a coffee can. As you pull the can up, the nachos then form into a plate of nachos. It's actually a pretty cool experience Just dish. Just a huge, huge amount of nachos. They are loaded with cheese and meat and all the different fixings. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you, for, if somebody hasn't had the, the trash can nachos, that's always a favorite. I love the pretzel bites. Uh, what else do you have for well, white times underneath? Yeah, my favorite thing, by the way, is just a little thing, but it's a paw print brand that you do on the hamburger buns. And obviously, this is Miles Lab Bar and Grill, and Miles was... I, I love that post that you put out there. It, yeah. If it doesn't have a paw print on the <laughs> bun, it's not the right place. Well, yeah. we have that paw print on the bun, so... We're definitely in the right place. Thanks, Brett. Well, I'm a lab guy. I know you're a lab guy. You guys love dogs up here. So that's a, it's a little nice. That's a little touch that I think is really nice here at Riverbend. So, uh, by the way, Joe, I, I want to just have Paul real quick because we just happened to come around the corner. Uh, right, not pretty much right out in front of the resort. And Dan's like, Paul's hooked up. I'm like, Row. so we rip over there, and your rod was just doubled over completely. How long had you been fighting that fish before we got there? Maybe three minutes. Oh, okay, not too yeah, long. Yeah, no, yet. I just hooked in, and then I saw you guys pulling over. I'm like, no way. Wow. Yeah, what are the, what are the odds? And Maybe you, four minutes. And you actually went live on your Facebook page, so you can go to the Riverbend Facebook page and see the see him battle this, and you'll see Dan and I pull up in our boat, and then we, we filmed it from there, and then Dan actually netted it from, from our boat. And that was a 62-inch fish, but the best part, I think, was that it was tagged. It was tagged, yeah. And the tag was hard to read. It was just slime, bottom-feeding fish, and so cleaning that off. Yellow tag, we just filled out all the information online, so we're waiting to hear back some of the information about that fish. But it was, pretty, it was really cool. It was a lot of fun. That sturgeon information, Joe, is really important when you're talking about managing a, a, such a healthy fishery like this one, isn't it? Well, it's, it's important, and it's also uh, it's interesting. I mean, you know, when you catch a sturgeon and then release that fish back, and, and you look at that tag and see how many times it's been caught, where it was initially netted and tagged, and where that fish has been. Uh, it's just super, infor very informative. And, you know, you talk about sturgeon on Lake of the Woods. You know, they, uh, they say that from Morrison, Ontario, all the way down through the basin, through the Rainy River, the DNR estimates, this is a very conservative estimate because they do this in conjunction with um, Canada and, and some of their fisheries folks. But they estimate that there's over 100,000 sturgeon over 40 inches long, and that's a conservative estimate. 
you know, our, our fishery, and, and, and things are on the rise. Both the numbers are on the rise and the size of the fish are on the rise. Uh, we have one of the one of the healthiest sturgeon fisheries in uh, in all of the nation. Certainly, the Midwest when it comes to lake sturgeon, and uh, you know you, you can see it. I mean, you know, yeah, we have ang walleye anglers out there, but how many people are out there targeting sturgeon? I think it's. I mean, it, I think it's. I, I guess I don't know the numbers, but you've watched in the last five, ten years just the amount of sturgeon anglers and how much that's increased. And I know a lot of guys will still come up here and fish for walleyes now until when it until it closes. But I know a lot of guys. A, a lot of guys that don't come up here until the walleye season closes just so they can have the river to themselves for sturgeon. So the walleye, course, the walleye season goes through April 14th, so a lot of sturgeon anglers will come after that. And I think the, the sturgeon can be uh, caught either a catch and release season or a keep season through about May 15th. And then they shut her down for the sturgeon spawn all the way until about July 1st. But then you can actually fish sturgeon all summer long, you know, all the way around again until, you know, May again. So really it's a big fishery. And I'll tell you something, as time goes on, you know, the culture, I mean, sturgeon anglers are growing. It's, it, it reminds me a little bit of musky anglers. You know, when somebody catches a real big sturgeon, a lot of times they're bit by that sturgeon bug. You know, it, it, maybe they never caught him before, maybe they never fished for him. But you catch that first sturgeon, feel the power, and just the enjoyment of sitting on a beautiful rainy river or Four Mile Bay, sitting back, letting, uh, letting your, your worms soak in the, in the water, watching for that tap. It's enjoyable. It's cultural. It's easy. It's, it's easy. so easy. And this is one of the healthiest sturgeon fisheries maybe in the world. 100%. And right now, there's some um, potential uh, changes in sturgeon regulations right now that I just I can't believe it's happening. Well, so in, in a nutshell, the, the Center for Biological Diversity is proposing to uh, the, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service that sturgeon across the United States should be put on the endangered species list, believe it or not. And you know, this is very similar to the whole wolf argument where the National Humane yes. Society. I've watched like eight breach on the river since we've started well, and this I, And I'll tell you what, so yeah. this is very similar to that whole wolf topic where the, the National Humane Society influenced some judges and boom, you know, all of a sudden wolves are delisted, or, or sorry, listed on the national uh, uh, Endangered, endangered species, species list, list yeah. and, and now the Minnesota DNR and many other states do not have the ability to manage those animals in their state. They want to manage them to have a healthy pack, but also manage them for success. Well, as we all know in Minnesota, things have gotten a little out of control with wolves, right? So with that being said, the Center for Biological Diversity is pushing. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has to make a decision on whether they're going to list lake sturgeon as endangered species by June 30th. Now, we've been out in front of this. We've, we had a, a Congressman Stauber stop up to uh, one of our resorts here in the Rainy River and talk sturgeon in support of us. The, the DNR has submitted information to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service saying we have a healthy fish, a fishery. We don't need your help. We got it under control. Things are incredible. We just had Senator, uh, U.S. Senator Amy Klobuchar's office meet with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service about this topic. And uh, so we, we got a lot of support. You know, we're hoping that they, uh, they don't do something so crazy that, uh, y y you know, when you talk about the whole United States, in Minnesota, the DNR manages each and every lake and river individually. Can you imagine taking a species and saying, we're going to manage it based on how things are going for the whole United States? Yeah, it doesn't make any it, sense. It's not biological, Brett. It's, it's political. Emotional. It's emotional. It's political and it's emotional. And it's, it's, it has nothing to do with the sturgeon. It has all to do with stripping our rights as hunters and anglers. It's the same thing with wolves because they knew that they could start with wolves because they're a controversial animal. They're a predator. Some people say you can't eat them. I've eaten one. It wasn't so bad. But they, they start with that. They start with an, a fish like sturgeon, and then they're just going to work their way down. And the other thing that we all need to watch out for is that these people that have these agendas have a lot of influence at the legislature. And they're getting these new legislators that, are, that have no idea. They're from the city. They don't know anything about management of wildlife or fisheries. And they're like, oh, yeah, it's not, oh, it's not in this lake anymore. Well, gosh, you're right. They should be. So they're, they're going about it in a legal-ish way that we need to be very, very worried about. So you need to contact your representatives to tell them about this so that they understand the reality versus this emotional argument. The other thing that's happening is in a lot of states, a lot of these people with the anti-agendas are getting elected to positions and also appointed to game management positions. So they're gonna try to take over and, rest and restrict our rights on a lot of these things based on politics and getting into office. So it's hard 
it's hard to defeat those people without getting involved in politics. Who, who likes politics, right? Anybody here? No. Really? But Dan, you said it best when actually our Governor it's, Walls. Governor Walls, that's the, like, the one thing I've heard him say that I actually said, oh, wow, you did that right. He said, I don't care if you're not interested in politics, politics is interested in you. And it's absolutely true when it comes to this Rainy River Fishery and Lake of the Woods and all of our hunting and fishing and our, our life in general. It, uh, it sucks to deal with sometimes, but it's what we deal with. We don't, Brett, I'll tell you what, you talk about the sturgeon issue. You know what, if there was a, if there was a need for us to manage those sturgeon in a different way, I think everybody, everybody here would be so for it. The fact of the matter is, the DNR has a great handle on it. Uh, the, the, the sturgeon right. population's going up. And I'll tell you something, from, from a cultural perspective now, because we have a culture of sturgeon anglers, that has started. And in addition, you take it our small business community up here, you know, during a shoulder season like right now, you know, those sturgeon anglers coming up, they are near and dear to our hearts. I mean, they are so helpful to, 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 to instill some some revenue into the system when there's not much happening up here in the spring or the fall or whatever. Right now. Right now. Yeah. Ask, ask a resort owner, what does sturgeon fishing mean to you? Well, yeah, ask the resort owner. And- I'll tell you what, Paul, I want to take a quick break, and I want you to answer Absolutely. that question when we come back on Sporting Journal Radio. 852 million acres of public land, 147 million private properties. All in the palm of your hand. The number one hunting GPS app just got better. With hundreds of custom map layers, 3D and topographic maps, you can easily scout on the road or at home before you go. And now you can get important weather details, CWD detection, and even know what crops have been planted where. Get the most trusted hunting GPS app ever made. Onyx. Know where you stand with Onyx. All right, we're back on Sporting Journal Radio. We're at Riverbend Resort. It's the SGR 500, the celebration of our 500th episode of the two-day fish donkey tournament. Right now, Joe Henry from Lake of the Woods Tourism and Paul Johnson from Riverbend joining us. And before the break, Paul, we were talking about what sturgeon, this st- healthy sturgeon fishery, what it means to this local economy. So how long have you owned Riverbend here? We, we've owned Riverbend for 12 years, but we came up here 14 years ago. And to watch the progression of angling these sturgeon in the springtime is, is just, it's crazy how much, or how popular it's become. Um, back then, once uh, walleye closed on April 15th, you didn't see too many boats out there, a few. Um, there's been seasons where there's a hundred and some boats right out front here that we can see from Wheeler's Point, you know, upriver towards uh, the uh, Rainy River Marina, you know, so it's got a lot of, of steam and, and a lot of, uh, people come up and really enjoy this opportunity it's been surging in popularity because it's the the river is pretty easy to fish the gear you need is not very expensive you don't need a lot and as we found out you anchor up you sit back there's eight different boats with stereos playing you know there are grills going one's on. got food yeah <laughs> and there may have been some cold beverages here and there we hadn't passed around and some had, food grilled we yeah. had food delivered to us from a, a grilled boat again thank you tony so it's it's a it's an event, you know, it's, a, it's an opportunity that not just the hardcore guys, but it's something you could bring a family out or people that don't fish very much or getting introduced to fishing because it's such a simple one and the fish are absolutely giant. They're monsters and that they fight. Like how sore were your arms, Paul, after you got done catching so that? So I didn't condition or do any calisthenics <laughs> or stretch this morning and that was my personal. It doesn't show. That was my, those, <laughs> uh, that's awesome. that was my personal best sturgeon ever and so that was awesome. I was excited. I didn't know what to say afterwards. I, I just was, I was shaking. It was surreal. Like, it was so fun. A lot of fun. So you're talking about something where you can introduce new people to the sport. It's catch and release for m- the majority of it. There is a, a short window for a, a, a 45 to 50 inch keep fish, but there's only so many tags that are given out for that. It's, it's, it's strictly tightly managed. Uh, we saw the COs out here on the river. We saw the Ontario law enforcement out here on the river. So they're, they're keeping an eye on these people. Uh, you know, so it, it's fun. It's easy. And the fish are the biggest fish, you know, in in the state of Minnesota. So the Canadian boat that said police on the side of it, right? It did. Yeah. We saw that one too. Yeah. You know, it's 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 kind of fun too because, uh, you know, when you're fishing sturgeon, a lot of times you catch. I mean, it's a river. You catch a lot of different fish. You catch wallers. You catch saugers. You catch eel pout. You catch suckers. You I saw catch, all those. What else? Uh, I saw uh, Cisco today. A Cisco. Yeah. It and hurts. And, and a, a lake, lot of lake it hurts. And you know what's really cool about lake sturgeon too is that when you catch a small lake sturgeon, the small ones have those scoots on the mm-hmm. side of their, and, and you know they're super sharp. They protect those little sturgeon from getting eaten by predators. And then as those 
uh, sturgeon just gets so darn big. Mm-hmm. They still got that hard armor, but those scoots start getting more kind of whittled down, you know? Just kind of reminds me of a guy that gets older. He kind of loses his sharp edges a little Smooths bit. Smooths out. Why'd yeah. you look at Paul? I'm not looking at you, that. by you the way. Did. You did. You're right looking at right at, at me. It's, it's on I'm camera. I'm looking at your wife, You're looking right at me. She's, she's <laughs> nodding, yes. Everything's on camera, Joe. Brandy, he's getting older. He's getting better. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. so Had my 11th birthday this year. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. You're a leap year. But the, right? Oh, yeah. that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yes. yes. February wow. 29th. But those sturgeon, they're such a neat looking fish. And, you know, they call them dinosaurs because they're, they, they have prehistoric roots, right? I think it takes about, tell, correct me if I'm wrong, about 10 years before a sturgeon can actually reproduce. Sexual that, maturity. Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah, seven, eight, ten years, I yeah. think, somewhere in there. So it takes a long time. But, you know, in, in, in talking to the DNR, and back in the day, by the way, I don't know if everybody knew this, but back in 1897, you know, we had some commercial fishermen around here, and they would they would net sturgeon. And when they would net them, what they would do is they would harvest that uh, the roe, you know, the caviar. And they would ship that up to Kenora. The reason being is that's where the railroad lines would go. And that caviar would go to the East Coast, all those big cities. At one point in time, Lake of the Woods was putting out one of the highest outputs of caviar in, in, in the whole North America. Now, what's interesting is that happened for about five years, and then they, they caught enough sturgeon that they kind of quit. Why are sturgeon doing so good? It's a combination of no more commercial netting. And by the way, when they'd harvest that roe, what they would do is they'd slice them right down the bellies, get that roe and stack those sturgeon up like cordwood. That's what they did back in the day. We even heard of some people using them for uh, burning in the winter, you know, for, for fuel. But that, those days are long gone. Um, there's no more commercial netting, of course, on Lake of the Woods. And then in addition, the Clean Water Act on the Rainy River. You know, there used to be so much pulp coming down mm-hmm. that uh, they cleaned all that up. And the bottom line is now the sturgeon can reproduce very effectively, and they've proven that. So that right there is an example of how managing a particular body of water for its particular characteristics can work instead of putting a blanket management in place. I mean, it's almost like talking about statewide walleye limits or something like that. Like some some lakes... A smaller limit might work. Some lakes don't need that. Some lakes might need a slot. Some lakes don't. You know, minimums and maximums. It's based on it's based on the uh, the fish population. It's based on what kind of uh, AIS you have, what kind of history you have, and so many other things. But that's why it's so nice. And I know the DNR takes some hits, but I'll tell you, I sure appreciate the the, the most of these biologists are very passionate. They're hunt, uh, they're anglers. They're hunter. You know, they hunt. I mean. Sure glad we have who we have. Put it that way. Yeah. You know, the, the problem, just like going, you know, make going full circle is the problem is when politics gets involved. You know, the biologists are the guys that are out there looking at these fish every single day. The fish squeezers, as Mockentune likes to call them. They're out there looking at these fish all the time. They know the health of these fisheries. I mean, obviously, you get mistakes here and there, and, and, and methods are being refined constantly. But they're the ones doing it. Obviously, there are some anglers out there with some anecdotal evidence of what they see, some observational evidence. But the biologists are generally the ones that are out there with actual data and research and trends so they can tell how the fishery is actually doing. hundred percent. I remember uh, talking to a politician once, and I made, I made the comment, you know what, that's not even logical. And he said to me, you know, Joe, be careful about using logic in politics in the same sense. <laughs> Oh, man. We didn't, uh, you caught a nice walleye, Joe, out here. We, I mean, I can't believe we're at the walleye capital and we've talked mostly about sturgeon this whole yeah, time. Yeah, when is there going to be a, a Steve the Sturgeon statue in Bidette next to <laughs> Willie the Walleye? Right. Well, I'll tell you one thing. You know, uh, it, it's kind of funny because, you know, last year, our ice fishing out here was just, you know, it was okay. It, it, it was a little bit tougher than normal. And, you know, there, I have some different reasons, I think, because of that. But here's a funny thing. All these Facebook trolls from last year who said the lake's fished out, this, that, and everything else. This year's ice fishing was some of the best we've ever seen. You talk to resort owners and guides who've been around for decades. They're like, this is some of the best ice fishing we've ever seen. And then on top of it, we're out there whacking fish today. I fished with Greg Jones today at Midwest Outdoors, and uh, Greg's a, a river rat, and he, he's a good stick. And, but you know what? I mean, we caught probably 50 fish. And, and I talked to the boat when we were docking, and I talked to one boat, ah, we had a, we, my wife and I didn't have a great day today. We only caught 40. Yesterday, we got about 110. <laughs> I mean, th- th- this kind of chatter is going on all over the place. But there's a lot of walleyes out there. There were so many, like, uh, and, and we stayed down here by the lake, but I heard reports way upriver where there were, I mean, amazing fishing up there. Maybe not the, uh, what, what we heard is, is maybe not the, the top end fish. Like, I feel like they were scattered out and maybe still up here. Like, we saw more bigger fish up here, but bigger numbers of, like, slot fish were up there. 
Yeah. But it was unreal. Like everywhere you look right now on social media, everybody's up here. All the brands are up here filming and taking product shots because they're all smashing big fish. Other latest and greatest jigs and whatever. And then all, you know, you see media guys out here. There was a couple other shows filming out here. There I know, was. So. Yep. We saw some too. Yeah. It's, uh, it was, it was, it was, I've heard some people say it's the best it's been in a long time. Yeah. You know, I tell you that uh, spring fishing, I mean, we we're out there today and, you know, we commented, we, uh, the pelicans, the hooded mergansers, uh, the different diver ducks. Let's not talk good about the pelicans. Though. Uh, yeah. We can leave them out <laughs> of it, or even but the I mean, mergs for that matter. But there's, there was golden eyes out there. There's tons of can- the Canada geese are getting a little obnoxious. I like Canada geese. Don't get me wrong. But I came up here for the peace and quiet. Every, yeah, <laughs> this is like they're just fighting everywhere right now. It's the breeding season, so you know you got uh, some courtship flights. You got some mallards that are paired up. You'll see some courtship flights where there'll be a bunch of drakes in one hand flying around, and they're fighting over that. Like there's one single lady. Do I dare uh, ask the host of Sporting Journal Radio about breeding? No, oh, jeez. <laughs> well, Joe, my mom's in the audience. Well, I, I'm aware? single with no kids, <laughs> so it's probably, if we're talking about ducks, I could probably answer the questions of, let's not talk about people, but yeah, there's, there's a ton, uh, there's sandhill cranes flying over. I swear I heard one snow goose sitting on the Canadian side somewhere. No. How about swans? Sure. Oh yeah, there's swans too. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, I, I, I'm okay. talking about the audience of the yeah. river. It's it, awesome. It, it was cool, wasn't yeah. it? And we were, you know, we, so my, my third place fish, third place fish, 20 and a half. Right. That's a nice walleye. And I'll tell you something, 20 and a half, but the girth on that fish, holy smokes, just wide. We were getting, Greg and I would catch a 24, 25 incher, and Greg's like, what do you think? And I'm like, ah, fast head shakes, probably just another cookie cutter 25. I mean, we caught a lot of 24 and 25 inch fish today. Nice breeding fish, and they are healthy. Did you guys get to film today? Did you do some filming? No, I didn't go. Oh, yeah, we shot stuff for Joe. Shot a, for- shot a video. Uh, we just, I already put it out on Facebook, so okay. we just shot a quick video and uh, we got some real good images. And just that, man, we cut my hand, you know, when your hands are all scraped up and cut up. It was a good day of wallet fishing. Oh, man. It was just a great couple of days up here. I had a blast once again. Can't wait. We should mention, Paul, next year. Uh, gosh, I got to look up these dates again. What? I got them. They're April 8th and 9th. 8th Thank and you 9th. very much. I'm going to put them on the screen when I remember how to do that. Here we go. <laughs> there you go. So check it out. Uh, April 8th and 9th next year here at Riverbend on the Rainy River for the fourth annual SJR 500. And uh, 50 bucks per person per night per guy. Yeah, so if you if you want to book now for that next year, that'd be a good idea. Um, yeah. We do fill up; it does get busy. So if you want to get in on that that great deal for next year, do it soon. Do it soon. Fifty bucks per person per, per, per guy. Can, can girls come too or no? Mm, okay, I'll I'll allow it. Just checking. <laughs> it is twenty twenty four. So, so got, it's fifty bucks we have per a lot of angler. Women yes. That we're talking. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Are we PC? But I'll, but I'll tell you what. It, 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 for I people I said that, per person. Uh, maybe for, I said for, for people guy. that don't know the Rainy River, we are smack dab in right, right at the, the mouth of the Rainy River. Right now, I'm looking across at Canada. There's boats out fishing. I mean, it's uh, and this bar is long. Sitting at that bar, having a your favorite hamburger, and they got some gourmet burgers. Having your favorite cocktail. And looking across out at that rainy river, looking across at Canada, no, I'll tell you what, it's pretty uh, pretty special. 80 feet of glass on a 92 foot wall, so Lots. you can see everything. Lots to look at. Well, next year, I'm assuming Greg, Greg, you're gonna play live music again next year. So come for some Greg Jones live music too. We're gonna talk to Greg and some of the other guys here when we come back. Uh, Paul and Joe, thank you very much. Thank Thanks, you guys. Northern Minnesota's Walleye Factory is a year-round world-class fishing destination. The perfect getaway this summer is just a short drive to Lake of the Woods. Fish Big Traverse Bay, the Rainy River, or visit the unique Northwest Angle. To catch big fish, you have to go where the big fish are. Plan your trip to Lake of the Woods at lakeofthewoodsmn.com. That's lakeofthewoodsmn.com. All right, we're back. Sporting Journal Radio. Thanks for tuning in on the network. By demand, sportingjournalradio.com. Or maybe you're watching this on YouTube. If you'll notice behind me, it says Riverbend Resort. And that's where we are right now for the third annual SGR 500. It's a two-day fish donkey tournament. So we got Darren Amundsen from Fish Donkey. It's a great last name. I've said it many times. I agree. And And also, Greg Jones, ladies and gentlemen, Midwest Outdoor. Hello. Greg, if it hasn't, thank you very much. If it hasn't As been would say. said yet, you're playing some live music here in the bar after we get done, and it's. I think you have to open with "Guy in a Buffalo." The people want it. The people have asked. Want to wait till everybody has a few beers? <laughs> yeah. I think Unless everybody. We're, we're, we're working say, on it. Huh? I think we're working we're on it. Who wants to hear "Guy in a Buffalo"? <laughs> the people want it. 
<laughs> we will have some fun. It's. <laughs> I don't. I don't even know this song. Oh. I didn't either until <laughs> this event like You're two years ago. <laughs> yeah. I got shown a video and then they said play it. <laughs> Which All was right. pretty impressive. We were showing them, we were in the cabin, and uh, Guy in a Buffalo is a YouTube thing. It, Look for it on YouTube. We won't explain it all here. Yeah. It's hilarious. And it's a guy singing about an old, like, 60s or 70s it movie. It was actually a guy named Jomo. I had to research this stuff. Okay. I'm messing with it. Have you ever... It's a, it's a band down, like, in Texas, and a guy's watching a movie about a frontiersman who caught a little buffalo and wrote it, and he wrote this... It's kind of like one of them, you know, underground things, Rocky Horror Picture Show deals. It's got a lot of views, put it that way. I don't think they've... Uh, Wrote any famous songs? <laughs> well, this I mean, famous, guy in a buffalo is pretty famous. Pretty famous. Greg, have you ever sang the Dan Blocker song? Mm, I can't say have. I might. It's, uh, have, but I'm Dan Blocker it. from Gunsmoke, and the only words in it are basically Dan Blocker. <laughs> <laughs> no, they'd be but easy to remember. It's one of those things that keeps you up at night if you sing it and everybody yeah, hears it. Yeah, you were explaining. <laughs> his brain is pretty complicated. He was talking about it last night. <laughs> yes, he indeed. Li- he, he likes to get lost in the woods, and he's been seeking that thrill the rest of his life. That's a true story. Are you talking about the Dan Blocker or Darren? No, no he's Darren saying, I was talking general. to Greg last okay. night. <laughs> right. I, can I tell a story now? Part sure. psychologist, Can I too. tell that story? I don't know. You talk to the boss over there I, on that. Sure. We're, we're, we don't so know the story. Is, yeah. My favorite uncle at the time, had, he taught me how to trap, um, passed away. His name was Ron Amundsen. Which is which my father's is, name, actually. Which is, I met Ron Amundsen, yeah. Brett's dad, because of, because of that. I went hunting with him. I was too young to carry a gun, so I think I was like 10. And one of his kids wounded a deer. And so we chased it, and, and behind our house, you could go um, for miles and miles without ever hitting a, a trail or a road. And so we chased it way back, and we were tracking it. And after a while, I got the impression that Ron was lost. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was really he freaking didn't say out. That, though. He did. He, he, he gave me the impression that he was lost. Um, and then, but he really wasn't. He really wasn't lost. Okay. And he knew his way out. And, and he followed this creek, and he came out um, down from our house, and, and everything was fine. We went back to the shack. But when we came out of the woods and I realized we weren't lost, I got this incredible, this, the adrenaline was pumping, and I just felt so great that I, I, uh, I wanted to do it again. And so the next day, my parents never knew this, I, wa- I went 10 years old, I went way back in the woods a couple miles, and I spun around in circles, and tried to get lost. Oh, really? Closed my eyes and spun around until I didn't know which direction it was. And, awesome. I, and I walked out of there, but it never happened again. I could never make it happen again. Yeah, you can never get the thrill could, after that. I could that. not replicate that feeling. I told him he feeling. should buy a guitar and, and join me on stage, oh, yeah, there and you, you can feel like that every night. <laughs> yeah, a fun we, one. We lost? should probably say that you probably shouldn't try this at home. <laughs> yeah. He probably do not say that thing these days. So did you, you, did you get lost that day? Or did second you just, day? Or the first day? No, the second day when you went out and tried I, to get lost. I could not get lost. I could not get lost. It was, it was, a car drove by and I could hear it from a couple miles away and I knew where the highway was and I, oh, and I, in cheap. fact, I've never been lost since then. I, I kept track. I think it freaked me out so much. I keep track of uh, where, every turn I make. Oh yeah. And I, I don't well, get lost. Well, that's how you keep from getting yeah, lost. I, I learned. I know what direction I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> that was well, the origin <laughs> of the fish donkey app. <laughs> yeah. Hey, keep track of everything. That was the beginning because if I would have got lost, I don't know, maybe I wouldn't, you know. <laughs> Wait a minute, There'd be no be fish donkey. We wouldn't right. look out for the bear. Right. Right. <laughs> Did you punch a cougar in the face? Did uh, you find a baby in the that's, woods? That's a guy in that bu- Yeah, that's a guy in a buffalo joke right adoption. there. Yeah. So, so back to the damn blocker oh, look, song. The baby. <laughs> look at right. the damn blocker This show song. derailed. Darren, so fish donkey is the app that we used. I think it's brilliant. It's a way to do uh, a tournament. It, it, for the most part, eliminates any possible way to cheat. Uh, and you can do a catch and release like this, like we did, which is perfect for us up here because this is obviously catch and release for these walleyes and sturgeon. How long has Fish Donkey been around? We first put our app out in 2018. Okay. And um, this was basically a slow start because uh, we're, we're a self-funded company. We started from our own cash flow, did everything ourselves, and never spent a dime on marketing, really. Um, just ran into some people who helped us promote it. Sure. Well, and it's it's interesting because it's something that's... You've got fishing tournaments all over the world, people using this app. 
We do. We do. Right now, uh, you know, it's predominantly in the Midwest. Sure. Uh, that's where most of our users are, and I think that's because we're here. But there are there are some tournaments going on right now in Norway, Australia, <laughs> Ireland. <laughs> that's um, insane. Yeah, it's cool. It's pretty cool. That's awesome. Um, did you you did some fishing? You fished in the tournament. How'd it go? Yeah. So I fished with a guy named Jason Elman of Northern Water Excursions. He's a he's a Coast Guard. He, he can give you Coast Guard certification as a guide, like uh, licensing. Get your captain's um, license. Captain's license. There you exactly. Go. Yeah, we were talking about him last night. And he he um he had never really fished for sturgeon though. I mean, he's fished for them, but it wasn't his thing. And we fished a section of the river. He'd never been on it. And uh, I'm fairly new to it. I've I've done it for about six seven years. But we didn't. We we were speci- specifically sturgeon. Sure. We didn't catch that many. We caught ten today. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's still a pretty good. Not day. that many. It was yeah. a great day. We had some doubles. Sure. We had some doubles. Um, I was a little stubborn, and I stayed in my in my favorite spot, and it was shallow. Uh, and when it warmed up, I said, "Hey, we're not really doing that great. Let's go into some deeper water." And we started we started catching more sturgeon, but you know they were smaller. Um, but yeah. yeah, we had a great time. Those small ones. He are cooked neat, elk in the boat. Oh, he's awesome. he's kind of like the guy you mentioned. He he got out the grill and he cooked elk. That's awesome. And it was it was just delicious. Yeah, it was a great day. Beautiful sunshine, warm. It, it was, was just, nice. It, yeah. We had that little that little squirt of rain that came through, and then after that, the sun came out and the wind kind of laid down for a while, and it was nice. Right. Uh, Greg, did you do any sturgeon fishing or just mostly target water? No, I had. Uh, I had one on today. Actually, yeah, it was the same fish. We eventually, I turned it up once I figured up. Uh, actually, I had two on today because one tricked me for a little bit. There was about a minute where I thought maybe this is Susie, but uh, <laughs> eventually it wasn't. And then I had a tail walker. That one was up in like, I uh, pitched a jig up into about six foot and it was in a back toe and it got it and was going that way and actually the fish come out of the water it probably covered about 10 feet the tail drug the whole way kind of looked like a tarpon so wow, they actually cool. will jump and a lot of people that caught them were talking about them breaching today or uh, you know it's I know they're different fish i mean they'll, they'll run right up on top of the water column the guys with the uh high-tech electronics were seeing them all through the water column and obviously they were on the bottom um we, there was times I had a live scope out, and there were times I was seeing what six, seven, yeah, at least, yeah, sturgeon at a time wicked. in my my cone. You know, basically what I could see yeah. my well, slice. It, yeah. And then on side scan or something, the amount of Those, times like side scan would just be full. Your screen is full of sturgeon. Well, that was ones up. I don't know if I. I mean, that's my fish in mind. I, I sometimes think about taking a bobber and seeing if they'd take that or what you could do to. And it sometimes reminds me of catfishing in the south. You know, that's something that's come along a lot of times, but there's not a lot of presentations. I mean, they will bite a jig. The two I had a day, they took it. It was in their mouth on a jig. But uh, them high ones are interesting. Back when we did the uh, kayak thing here, I mean, them, I've seen fish swim right by the kayak. I mean, talk about being high in the water column. They're like six inches underneath the surface of the water. And as big as the kayak, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was... Uh, it, it, made you wonder you got comfortable with it after a while but you know. I'm, I'm sorry i think it's cool we watched jay siemens kayak video from here on the rainy from a couple years ago or whatever and it was pretty cool he caught some big sturgeon and it'll give him a lot of credit i i don't want to do it i like oh, a boat i want to do that yeah I boats do are that. nice do it? Yeah. <laughs> it does it kind of reminded me of being a kid fishing you know i mean it, it kind of and, you know, I mean, what do you, less is more, I guess, in that situation. You catch a, a 70 inch sturgeon in a kayak. You're trying to pull that thing into the kayak to unhook it, or are you just trying to unhook that thing next well, to the Well, it's, it's going to take you for a ride. It'll pull a boat. Sometimes you got to pull the anchor. I mean, it'll, we, it'll pull we you got, to 2025. You know what the key was? I, I was thinking of trying you know, to go ashore, but that's probably not fair. No. <laughs> Those people we were fishing with, they said, I don't know what you do with it when you get one on, but I think right. I'll get you to one. So we went and got one, and there was one of the, it was for Hobie, one of them guys. He knew what he was doing because he'd fish big fish in salt water out of kayaks and, you know, no problem. Tail rope it. Yep. That's what you do. Tail rope it and you can do any. Once you got but, it by the tail, you're good. But where do you yeah. put the grill? <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Where do you put the cooler? Yeah. Yeah. There's, you yeah. Know, where there's do you put the, the speaker? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, some of these Hobies have got to have a speaker built I right into them. Just the whole DJ Actually, system. Actually, the, the show this year, they got them with trolling motors. In, oh, yeah. So, yeah, there's no yeah. even more. I think Jay I don't know if you can motor. carry it anymore, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not far. I mean, at least. You might as well be in a boat at that point. But 
it's kind of cool, I guess, if that's your thing. I won't, uh, I won't hold it against you. But uh, it's been a great tournament. Uh, Darren, I appreciate the Fish Donkey's contribution and being here and coming out and joining us. Thank you to you and Dan, and uh, thank you to Paul and Brandy and everybody else who's helping to put this on. It's been awesome. I like it. I'm coming back every time I can. It was supposed to be Team Amundsen all the way across the top of the board. We didn't quite, well, we didn't fish. We didn't enter fish. So it was up to you. It was a good (laughs) plan. Wade and Chris. Um, I I made the plan, and I thought it was a great plan. Uh, (laughs) A lot of other people have to help me execute, and, uh, you know, maybe next time. We'll go back to the drawing board. Uh, Greg, thanks for being a part of it, too, and uh, we're looking forward to you singing later. Thank you. We'll have fun, and you guys, both you and Dan, always do a great job, and you uh, do good things for the outdoors. Thank you very much. Greg Jones, Darren Amundsen. Uh, Thank you very much from Riverbend. We're going to end the radio show, but we're going to continue the podcast. So go to our YouTube channel if you're listening to us on the radio to hear the rest from the SGR 500. Now is the time to start thinking about chasing big walleyes on Devil's Lake. Get on the fish at Hay Bale Heights Campground and Resort. Hay Bale Heights makes it easy for you to make memories on legendary Devil's Lake with guided fishing and lodging packages. Or bring your own boat and rent one of their cabins on East Bay. Hay Bale Heights offers a private marina, fish cleaning station, and the opportunity to relax and enjoy your bucket list trip to Devil's Lake, North Dakota. To book your trip, visit haybaleheights.com. That's haybaleheights.com. All right, we are back here on the podcast portion of Sporting Journal Radio. Thank you for watching this on YouTube or if you've downloaded it on uh, uh, Spotify or iHeart or Apple Podcasts, wherever you're getting it. Thank you very much. Uh, Dan Amundsen and Brett Amundsen here along with Jamie Dittman and Jesse Sanders. Fellas, how sore are your arms? Or how, you know, Dan kept making the joke the whole time and he didn't want to It wasn't be, a joke. <laughs> he didn't want to be in your room with all that sturgeon slime. It's going to be pretty bad. Oof to... Because you guys smashed sturgeon this week. I got a pretty good slap to the face today by one. Oh, yeah. Tell me about that. First of all, so Jamie uh, and Jesse, first and third place, right, Uh, with a 68 and a 64 and a half inch sturgeon, respectfully, sort of. What? That's that's just about you guys. I just don't really respect you guys. Uh, (laughs) Wow. Yeah. So tell me about the fish today. What happened there? Uh, Today started off good. There's a lot of jumpers. There's a lot of fish on the on the electronics and uh, right away we hooked up with a 68 and it took quite a while but finally got it in and by that time there was no holding the fish for a pitcher it was on the floor pitcher I was tired and but we were pretty happy with that one yeah that, that is that the picture that I shared the on the floor yep, picture? yep. Yeah. I tried to lift it and it just kept getting out of I me I lifted it up in his lap like what three times yeah did you do and a girth he, measurement on it no we didn't okay I just try to get them back fast as I can and right for sure so what, which one hit you in the face? That one did. That yep. one did. Yep. So what, how hard did you laugh, Jesse? <laughs> the slime was everywhere. Like, there wasn't much laughing. I knew how mad he was. Look. <laughs> did you get cut? <laughs> no, a little bruise? Or just the ego is a little just bruised? Oh, okay. All right. So 31 fish the first morning, first day, really, and then about 10 or so the second day. Is this the best sturgeon fishing you've ever seen up here? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know we've had 20 fish days with three people in the boat, but to have two people in the boat, 31. I mean, it was just nonstop day. That's pretty wild. And there's another group of guys here. I think they had four people, but you guys had over 50. You had 50 sturgeon, yeah, I think. Nine guys, three boats, 57 fish, two and a half days. With steroids. <laughs> that was a lot of numbers to try to remember. I, can you write that down? <laughs> Spell it out. Sound it out. Say that again. They had 50 in one day. The four pon- guys, the, the pontoon. pontoon. The pontoon with four guys, 83 sturgeon. Four, the, okay. Two days, 83 sturgeon in two days. Oh, wow. Sure. Nice. So what we tried to do to, th- yeah, nice job, guys. Yeah. What we tried to do, and thankfully a lot of these guys participated as we asked them to register all their small sturgeon to. I'm sure not every single one of them got registered, but there was a ton of sturgeon because we wanted to show the number of fish that were being caught and how healthy this fishery is. And sturgeon fishing is fun because it's it's easy, and these fish are giant, and there's a lot of them right now. It's it's the, the number of fish that you're seeing jumping and on the sonar is just unbelievable. I mean, we've had good years and we've seen good fish, but this year was, I mean, at any time you could look around and see a splash from a jumper and three hookups on boats. And yeah. The whole day, like, the fish are surfacing everywhere. I mean, they hit our trolling motor. Oh, really? Kicked us off spot lock and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I they're that. jumping right next to the boat. They're just surfacing everywhere. 
That's you know? insane. Well, that I remember we went walleye fishing for a little bit that first morning, and then we, were, we went outside the gap to fish out there. We zipped past you, and we get out there, and we caught one. Your mom caught <laughs> one, <laughs> and then you're like, we have 31. <laughs> Whatever, <laughs> like, oh, my gosh. So we had a zip over there, and then uh, curse of the camera, it all shut down. Cold, for the most part. cold front came. Cold, yeah. <laughs> for the most part. Honestly, we still did watch people catch. Actually, yeah. Dan caught one when we moved sure into did, there. Yeah. 52 or something. Yeah, something there. And a few people caught fish. It slowed down. It seemed like the last couple of days, it, it was for walleyes, too. It was a morning It was bite. a morning. And you can tell those times, too, when you're watching the boats around you and all of a sudden, three boats behind you hook up. And you're like, here it is. And you hook up, too. They, it seems like there's waves. I can't believe you didn't cook in your boat this year. I didn't. I was lazy and made sandwiches and concentrated on fishing. They, this guy, they were good, though. He's, <laughs> he's normally got a grill going. He's got a heater going in there. He's probably got Greg Jones singing in the front of the boat. We, we went topless this year, too. <laughs> you did? Yeah, you yes. didn't put the top on. Yes. Up. Wow. Yeah. Hardcore. Yeah. <laughs> well, the weather was pretty nice for it. Uh, you know, I, I know a month ago we were thinking we'd be fishing a lot of the lake, maybe, by this time. But then we had that cold front. And that might... that. That weather pattern that we had might be part of the reason why the fishing was so good. You know, we might have had the stars aligned and uh, just just nailed it this time when all the fish were coming in and, and maybe getting active, it seems like. But it was uh, it was a lot of fun. So, Jamie, what I want you to do right now, if someone out there is watching or listening to this and they say, I want to try sturgeon fishing for the first time, what, what advice would you give them? Uh, buy a net. <laughs> yeah, we Which, made that mistake. We did that yeah. this year. You know, Thanks, yeah. You really don't need a lot. Big net, yeah. Um, a medium, heavy, heavy uh, musky rod. It doesn't have to be graphite. A glass rod, 40-pound braid, 40-pound mono leader, circle hooks like a catfish rig, uh, two to four-ounce weights, and that's it. You just need a net. There, you don't need much. You don't need any specific colors. You don't need, you know, any other gear. That's it. We saw people out there in flat bottom boats, you know, duck boats, whatever, big boats, nitros, um, you know, pontoons. I think there were, what, four pontoons out pontoons, there? Pontoons, bass boats, smoker crafts with a windshield. <laughs> we had two live scopes going, which we didn't use them a whole lot with, with, uh, with the, the sturgeon fishing, but it was kind of fun to see all the sturgeon down there. You had your live scope pulled down. You didn't even turn on your live scope for a long time. We, we like the live scope for when you catch one. You could see it's 80 feet from the boat on the bottom, and sure. then it's back to 40, and then it's down again. You know, we pretty much helped <laughs> I'm, Scott. I'm making ground. Fish. No, you're not. <laughs> you know, Scott wouldn't have got his fish. Was for us. Well, if you, yeah, if you didn't keep telling him it was going back down, he would have never known. Yeah, he would have never known it was at the surface. To net it, you know, he had to know when to get the net that's ready. Right. Yeah, it was on right. the surface. Yeah, yeah. But really, I mean, a guy could use musky gear. A guy could use catfish gear. You can buy those catfish rods pretty cheap, and the yeah. reels, and you know, it's you don't need fancy electronics. You don't need fancy boats. I mean, it's fun to be in some of these comfortable boats. It would be nice to have a windshield. <laughs> well, I, I don't even know. I, I, I'm, I've heard that so many times this week. I don't know what to say at this point. If you want to buy one, a windshield, not a boat. I don't want you to buy a boat yet. A windshield, we can put it on. Do you still have those windshields? <laughs> well, for oh, fun fine. this year, I tried that little saltwater rod. Oh, yeah. A little five and a half foot, just tiny, heavy, like, they use it for fishing like shipwrecks. It's real stout but real small with a, a pretty big size reel on it. And I caught the reel a is huge. 48 and a 52 on that, and it was bent tip to handle, and that, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. Well, it's an amazing day uh, fishing. I wish you guys would have told us to come sit by you earlier. It wouldn't have mattered. <laughs> Cold front Amundsen showed up. <laughs> Just listen. Yeah, pretty much. But uh, congrats, guys, on the tournament. Nice job. We'll be right back. Hunt, fish, conserve, repeat. That's the mission here at Sporting Journal Radio, and if you love the outdoors as much as we do, show it off with new wildlife-themed gear from the Sporting Journal Radio store. From hoodies to hats, coffee mugs, wildlife prints, and you can even make your phone stand out with a new case sporting some high-quality wildlife photography. Go to sportingjournalradio.com and click on Store. We have a huge selection of gear with new items being added every week. Powered by Shopify, which is trusted by over 1 million businesses and offering a variety of ways to pay, including PayPal. Shop now at sportingjournalradio.com. 
All right, we are back on the podcast here at Sporting Journal Radio. Thank you for tuning in. It's uh, Riverbend Resort is our location right now. That's Dan Ammons and I'm Brad. Well, you guys know all this. We've been through this a yeah. few times. Yeah. Is this, hey, by the way, is this SJR after dark? <laughs> I suppose it's it would be. No. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so for the people listening to this at 6 a.m. on Saturday, it's nighttime. It is night. What time is it uh, here at Riverbend? 8.35 p.m. Central. So we're recording this after day two of the SJR 500, the third annual. And uh, we have a couple of our participants right now. Josh Miscavige, did yep. I get it right? Yes, you did. I only said it like 20 times beforehand to make sure I got it right. And Eric Solo, that one's a little bit easier. Yeah. That I knew easy. your brother, Han. How many times have you heard that? That's my other brother. Yeah. <laughs> your you other brother, Daryl? It had the cadence of a joke. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So you guys, uh, how'd the tournament go for you? Pretty good? Mine went really good. Yeah. Day one, we got 50 sturgeon. Day two, we got 33. That's insane. Uh, where are you from, first of all? I'm from Minto, North Dakota. Minto, okay, so you, yep. that's where you live now? Or yep. that's Okay, yep. so you had a little bit of a drive to get over here. A little bit, not bad. All right, well, thanks for coming over. Yep. Um, and Eric, you're from up here, right? Yeah, I live in Bedad here. Bedad, yeah, that's yep. cool. So let's start with you. Um, Eric, how did the tournament go for you? Uh, we did really well. Yeah. Uh, yesterday was a little bit better than today, but uh, I think, like we said, there was three boats, nine people. And we boated 57 sturgeon. Yeah, that's awesome. And I want to say about 20 of them are over 40, 45. Did you guys notice, like, I, I feel like I was hearing a, a lot of 50 to 55 to 60 inch fish this year. Maybe it was a, a 50 to 60. But did you guys notice a, a, a you know, a year class or a, or a section of length that seemed to be higher in population than others? Or, or was it all over the board? The bigger population for us was in the... Mid uh, mid twenties to uh, mid thirties. Oh, okay. For ours, Some young fish. Yep. All right. A lot of young fish for us. All right. <clears throat> yeah, we had a lot of healthy little fish, but uh, <laughs> we had a lot of big fish as well. <laughs> and you know, those are fun. That's a lot okay. of fun. So over a hundred fish between your boats this last couple of days, then basically. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. So Eric, you grew up here. You fished this lake a lot, and this river a lot. What have you seen? Like, how have you seen the sturgeon? Uh, rise in popularity over the years well I tell you what I remember riding my bicycle to the river as a kid we'd go to grandma's place we'd pick some night crawlers grab our rods and head to the river and uh, if we caught one between all of the friends that was a good year you know and as it progressed we got our license we got boats you know little 14 footers with little motors and we'd go out and we'd hope to catch one keeper a year you know, and that was great. Pull that just a little bit closer, would you? But now, uh, like I said, high school was great. Um, how to big, just catch what, one fish. Yeah, when you guys were catching just one, like how big would that sturgeon be? So they would be the big ones. The big they ones. were definitely big ones. Okay. And you would get one a year, maybe, if you're lucky, between a whole group of friends. And uh, as I progressed into my 20s and 30s, the number of sturgeon that you catch every year has progressively gotten more and more and more. Yeah. Well, and I think that has something to do with the, the health of the fishery and the management of the fishery. You've probably seen sturgeon get cared a lot more. You know, people care about the sturgeon a lot more than they did back then. And I, you know, you, you heard Joe Henry earlier talk about the Clean Water Act of 1972 and how there's sturgeon have always been here, but there, there's an over harvest, the river got really dirty, the population, uh, decline drastically and I feel like when I start first started coming up here for sturgeon I don't know Jamie was that 10 years ago or whatever it was you, you, it seemed like we were we were living with those maybe fish that were starting to grow before you know when that clean water act kind of went in and all of a sudden like now you had all these big fish that just hadn't been in here because of the the, the, the degradation of the river and all of a sudden the river's cleaner uh, they're managed a little bit better and all of a sudden you see that population grow and now as that continues to happen now we're seeing all the younger generations of sturgeon coming through too yeah absolutely correct so you started seeing a little bit more 40 inches and then you see a little bit more 50 inches and now we're seeing 60 inches you know and it's just a matter of time before that 60 inch class turns into a 70 inch class right I mean, you've watched it progressively got better and better and better. We told ourselves this year, 65 plus, if you want a place in the tournament, 65 plus. Because there's a lot of fishermen and there's a lot of big fish out there. 
Well, and it was pretty close to that. 64 and a half was right at the bottom there, but 68 won it, and then what was 65 was second place. Just think the fact that like we sturgeon fish, we caught 50 inch, 50 inch fish. We go, oh, it's only a 50. <laughs> know, right? <laughs> like that's saltwater standards, you know. Yeah. And we're in Minnesota. Like that, how cool is that? Yeah, it's, way it's cool. It's absolutely cool. You, you could tell the difference between a small fish and a big fish when you see that that line just go tick tick tick, and you reel in, and all of a sudden it's hooked up. You don't quite know right away, but then once you hit it and then it hits back, you know it's a big fish. It's funny, I watched a couple fish get caught around us where the, the fish was kind of just riding it in and coming into the boat. I'm like, ah, this one's not very big. And all of a sudden, zzz, 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 I'm like, oh, I'm going to need a net. <laughs> like, yeah. This is a bigger fish than I thought it was. So the, the health of this fishery obviously is is unbelievable right now and I think a lot of that has to do with the management and the, the information we've learned from the tagging program that's gone up here. Have you caught a, a tag sturgeon Eric? I have not. What have, What's some of the stories you've heard about tag sturgeon up here though? Um, I, I know a lot of people that have done it and it's really cool to get that information and know when that fish was caught last, where it was tagged, where it has traveled, how many people have caught it. Yeah. I mean I almost wish they would do more. Yeah. I, I really do. Well, and then, and uh, like on the St. Croix now, they're doing some citizen uh, tagging. I've like, actually thought about doing that. Yeah. So, I don't know. Maybe that could be something. I don't, we, I don't know. If, well, I guess that's a border water. I mean, it's with Wisconsin, but I don't know if they would allow that up here with the Ontario. Is, is it just me or is it weird that Ontario doesn't allow you to finish turning over there? Well, it's very weird. I don't know what's going on over there. But Follow the science. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. what's going on. So, Josh, you actually caught a tag sturgeon last last year, two years ago? Yes, I caught one yesterday. Well, oh. I caught one two years ago, Yeah, and then I caught another one yesterday. That's cool. What did you, you haven't got the tagged info back from this, this one yesterday. Not the most recent. But two years ago, what did you learn? Two years ago, the one I got was 48 inches, I believe. And it was caught nine, or it was tagged nine years prior, and I was the first angler to report that tag and it grew nine inches in nine years nine years okay yeah all right and that's cool because that, that's what they say is about an inch a year yeah especially when they're those. young yeah, yeah. and yeah. I've once they start getting bigger they slow down a little bit but yeah. yeah yeah we that that weekend that we got that that i got the tag one two years ago we got two other tagged fish in that boat and both the other tagged fish were in the mid to upper 50s and in the one in 11 years so the, it was a 57 tagged 11 years prior, and it had only grown an inch. Wow. And then the other one only grew like three inches in eight years. So once they, I think they break that 50 mark, they really slow down on the growth. Yeah, I suppose it, it comes down to some of the genetics then if they're, yeah. you know, if they're going to get bigger or not. But you know, the data don't lie. And the more data you can have, yeah. the better. That's why I, I told Alex, I said, we should be registering every fish this tournament. Big or small, register Was that your all. idea originally? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. I told idea. them that. Yeah. I said, it's data points. Yeah. You know, and it's only going to help us in this battle to, you know, make them realize that this is a, this is the field of dreams for a sturgeon. That's it really cool. is. Title the podcast. Steal that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Title the show. The right Rainy there. River. Field of dreams. Yeah. Fish it. Fish it and you will catch. <laughs> Something like that. Anyway, yeah, we can workshop that. <laughs> Let Eric come up with it. Yeah. <laughs> He's doing better than you right now. So I remember, I think last year we talked about it. I don't remember who was on the show talking about it last year, but I feel like we talked about Tag Sturgeon, and, and there was one that maybe had gone, it was caught 20 years earlier. Didn't Nathan catch it? That's what I thought. Is, Nathan, is he here? He's here. Is he, was that the story? It was like 20 years between catches? So 20 years it didn't get caught and then it got caught twice in a week <laughs> it was hungry <laughs> i guess it's so cool though that you can just learn so much about those fish and where yep. they travel and that's uh that's pretty cool well uh it's very interesting i i think it's uh really cool that you're passionate about the sturgeon up here and you you, you do a lot of fish in other places for big fish too i fished the croya several times because i grew up closer to the St. Croix River. Okay. And I've fished anywhere from Taylor's Falls down to Bayport and do a lot of ice fishing for sturgeon down in Bayport, Minnesota. And and, that, yeah. and and that's good fishery, obviously the state records over there, but 
if you were to pick one or the other, which one are you going to go to? It would be the rainy. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> there we go. No offense to St. Croix. That next day record will come out of this river. Yeah. So it will. I, yeah. Um, have you guys heard of 70 inch, 70 inches out here? And then there's a rumor of maybe an 80, maybe. Do you know any idea if that's true? I, I mean, did I, hear. I did hear of one in Four Mile Bay, but. I mean, you think that that would get, like, somebody put a picture on Facebook, like, look what I caught, unless he, unless there was something weird about it, you know. It's on the Ontario side. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> yeah. So who knows? It might come out later on. Okay. I've, was this, it you? No, it was not. <laughs> I would have won the tournament. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> After the I, statue of limitations is up, then we can look at it. I have heard one report of a possible 80-plus inch sturgeon caught on the St. Croix, but that was maybe four or five years ago. Okay. But I don't know verifications on that. That's just right. a rumor. People never lie about the length of their fish. Never. <laughs> never. That's never. That's never happened. The bigger the fish, the truer it is. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Well, guys, uh, thanks for being a part of it. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you guys next year. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very good. All right, Josh and uh, Eric, thank you very much for being on the show. And uh, thanks uh, to everybody that came out tonight for the third annual SGR 500 and the podcast, of course. Thank you to River Band. Make some noise for River Band. Uh, thank you to uh, Fish Donkey. Thank you to uh, Lake of the Woods Tourism. Thank you, Dan. Yeah, thank you. Nice job. It was a fun week. It was a fun Let's week. Let's do it again next year. Okay. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. Sporting Journal Radio is a division of Macaba LLC. If you've got a question, comment, or story idea for us, send us an email. Go to sportingjournalradio.com. While you're there, you can learn how to advertise on the show and visit our store for hats, hoodies, coffee mugs, and more. Go to sportingjournalradio.com.